Hello, I'm Jess Hayden. On behalf of the Susquehanna Folk Music Society, I'd like to welcome you to this virtual concert featuring the band Varsin Duo. For the last 30 years, Mikhail Marine and Olaf Johansson have played together as Varsin. At various times, this group has been a quartet or a trio, but now as a duo, these two exceptional musicians are creating a new musical vision for the band, modern, but firmly rooted in their folk traditions of their native Sweden. Following the concert, stick around for an illuminating conversation with the band, moderated by Bruce Sagan, a noted American musician specializing in Scandinavian and Balkan fiddle styles. The Susquehanna Folk Music Society is based in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, and we're currently presenting a full slate of virtual events. Visit susquehannafolk.org to learn more. Tonight's concert is sponsored by the American Scandinavian Foundation and the Barbara Osha Prosucia Foundation. Susquehanna Folk also receives funding from the Pennsylvania Council of the Arts, the Culture Alliance of York County, and the National Endowment for the Arts. Now, please join me in welcoming the Varsin Duo. Hello and very welcome to Concert with Varsin Duo. We have here Mikael Marin, Hello, hello. <laughs> nice to see you. <laughs> and I'm Olof Johansson. Um, and uh, thank you so much to Susquehanna Folk Music Society and Jess Hayden for inviting us and asking us to do this. This is going to be good fun. Uh, and this is being recorded on historic Vasen ground. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's at the Studio Torpet in Dalby, <laughs> <laughs> just outside Uppsala, um, where we have recorded many Väsen recordings and uh, where I'm working basically every day. And here's my Mikko Harpa se selection. Hmm. Um, yeah. And I have some weird instruments here too. Yeah. <laughs> and <clears throat> During this um, s strange career of trying to be a musician <laughs> during the pandemic, we have uh, looked into our past. Uh, we have looked back on, on musicians who have inspired us a lot. And we have also trying, been trying to look into the future, what, we will, what kind of music we're, we want to do. Yes. <clears throat> and this also gave us possibilities with different kinds of nickel harpas. This is a hundred year old silver boss harpa, for this example. Is, oh, this is ancient. No, it's it's an it's a electric blue viol viola tuned like a cello from the 90s, actually. Yeah, <laughs> it's <laughs> last century. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so these two are from the same century, actually. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we are going to start with a tune I composed right before Christmas. Uh, it was in in the time of Advent, uh, and here it is Advent Polska.
Yeah. Well, that was Advents Polska. Um, it's a very good tune, I oh. think. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I love to play. <laughs> I composed it when I was. Uh, we just started to rehearse, and I was waiting for Mikael to come here to Dolby and for playing some tunes. And this came out ready to be played. Yes. Uh, one of the musicians that uh, we heard when we were young, uh, fiddlers and nickel harpists, um, here in the region of Uppland in Sweden that we were blown away by was the amazing, the great master of the Nyckelharpa, Erik Salström. Uh, and he lived in uh, Jöksby in the north of Uppland. Uh, and I was lucky enough to get to hear on several concerts. Mm. I guess you did too. Yeah, um, I remember I'm watching him playing the nickel harpa and I was not a nickel harpa player and has never been but I wanted to play like him he was <laughs> an amazing musician yeah and I also got the chance to go and visit him um, and record him several times and he was uh, you felt like you were ten times as good playing when you were when you could sit next to him so here in this room I have many cassette recordings with Erik Salström playing and there's a noise on <laughs> each one of those recordings <laughs> yes. and that's his, uh, his dog, a, a pug, I think it's called, in the, it's a small dog. Gurkan. Yeah, <laughs> the name was Gurkan, means cucumber. And I think Erik Salström trained him to sit next to any kind of microphone he could find and make the sound that a pug does when he's breathing. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to play some tunes um, without that noise, but uh, tunes that we've learned from Erik Salström. And the first one is a traditional uh, Polska, Bund Polska, the bouncy type of Polska from this province. Uh, Bund Polska. And this one is after a Nikola Harpa player called Sveed Mark. Oh, Spiel Gustav. Yes. He was from Tierp uh, and he had the best dance beat in the entire Tierp area when he <laughs> in the 1800s. <laughs>
Yeah, that's a really nice dance tune. Yeah. What about that story of, uh, with Spiel Gustav and um, the Hocus Pocus thing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's... He was hired to play in a, a village. Uh, it wasn't the one he lived in, uh, outside of Tier, but the next one. Mm-hmm. And he was a fiddler there, a nickel harpa player there, who was kind of annoyed by this beca- because he wanted this gig. Mm-hmm. So Spiel Gustav, he was there playing for dancing and this competing nickel harpist, he came into the room mm-hmm. and he pulled he was really annoyed by this situation so he pulled up this thread and he put it in in the mouth and he started to chew on it ah. oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow <laughs> staring at spiritual stuff and suddenly all strings broke off on his nickel harpa so that's how you do it that's how you get your gigs <laughs> <laughs> chewing on friends that's yes yeah um, magic <laughs> uh, this knowledge it's gone now how to do those things or have you but you are teaching at the Royal Music Academy yes, at I'm the folk music department sorry. don't you have this as a subject um, we should <laughs> <laughs> I will look, look into that yes Here's another traditional tune um, uh, that I remember I asked Erik Sahlström to put as many double stops and ornaments in it when he played it. And you could see the sparkles in his eyes when, when I <laughs> asked him that. And then he took off playing and after a while it was just double stops and ornaments. Hardly no melody anymore. <laughs> and finally he ran into some kind of ornamentation wall and um, <laughs> burst out li- laughing instead. Uh, and it's a, it's a Polska and the name is Smultronjars Ida and she was a, a woman who played the fiddle and the accordion. She was a f- good friend of Erik Salström. Mm. So here it is Smultronjars Ida. Thank you. 
so that was a couple of traditional tunes uh, that I've learned from Erik Sahlström. And now we're going to play uh, a couple of his own compositions. Uh, he composed a lot, lots of great music. Yes. Uh, making tunes all day long. <laughs> <laughs> And he started to play on his father's Silverboss Harpa, which was the kind of nickel harpa I started to hear on the concert. And now I pick up my three row nickel harpa, and Erik Sahlström was involved in developing this model. He made it popular, you could say. Mm. He also made it possible for many people to build their own nickel harpas. So there's a lot of Nicolapas that made the qualities so so. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he was the teacher at many Nicolapas uh, building courses in Sweden in the 1970s mm. and so on. Um, so, but now it's new instruments. So, this is a three row? Nicolapas? This is th a three row. And this is a violoncello, la spalla, um, baby cello, yeah. or chin cello, <laughs> <laughs> for you, for me. Yes. Yes. Uh, Erik Sahlström, he lived uh, in Jöksby, and north of Jöksby there is a big um, uh, wet forest area, you could say there is bogs and small lakes and uh, forests and so on like a wilderness uh, and he was out there walking on one of these big bogs it's called Stormyren the big one mm -hmm. the big bog and he said his uh, feet were sinking all wow. the time when he was walking so he composed a polska that was a bit slow Stormyren
Nice Since tune. Nice tune. Do you know when he composed that? What in what time area? It's... Uh, he, I, I've heard he composed most of his tunes in the 1940s. Okay. 1940s and 50s. During the, the end of Second World, World War and then. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but I'm not sure about this one. No. Uh, but, but we let's play another one yes. of him. Uh, this one is called Andakten, uh, and it's a very much played, very popular tune. And he he was asked to come uh, and play at the open air mass organized by the local um, in the parish where he lived. Um, the local congregation and this it was taking place by a lake um, in the summer so he he said yes I'd like to come uh, and then he he composed this tune to play it there uh, but he said that the road was so windy driving down mm. <laughs> to this lake so he he forgot the tune oh. <laughs> but he played something else uh, uh, and no one noticed <laughs> <laughs> but then on the windy road back home the tune came back so when he got back home he took he picked up his nickel harpa and and practiced it for a while longer and then he remembered it and it got the name Andakten. Erik Salström <coughs> tunes and Erik Salström tradition. Now over to some new composed music. Yes. So I'm switching back to my old Silverbass Harpa um, and uh, we have been diving deep in this sound of the silver boss harpa and the electric viola. It's yeah. great fun. <laughs> that was 
like a coincidence <laughs> that it's but it mainly was because it's C major instruments. So yes. I have the C and you have the C and, and the C. 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 Yeah. Uh, so here's a new uh, Polska I composed uh, and it was uh, a day here when it, it's been a bit warmer one day here during winter and then it got cold again and there was all these D's we could say D's <laughs> smog no 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 because it's just D's <laughs> yes it's um, um, it was like milky outside when you looked out the window <laughs> Yes, <laughs> you can see the, the D's. <laughs> yes. Uh, and now one of your new compositions. Yes. Um, for a year ago I got uh, to be a grandfather. Um, that was a big thing for me. And now uh, my grandchild is uh, a little bit over one year old and I got to babysit him for the first time and it was so much fun and I was totally exhausted after uh, <laughs> a day with Horab. <laughs> uh, a lot of energy but such a nice uh, kid and uh, 
After that, I composed a tune for him, and the name of it is Kung Harald, King Harald. <laughs> um, it's not, I know there's a king in Norway, Harald. Wasn't it Denmark? Harald I was in the blue. Harald Blåtand. Blåtand, yeah. Harald yeah. Bluetooth. Harald Bluetooth. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, it is Kung Harald. And how does it? He's going to be a king, or he's already a king. Oh, okay. Actually, in the, very soon I'm going to be grandfather for the second time. Oh, so looking forward to that. <laughs> that's that's why you you grow this to to look like a grandfather. <laughs> you, you can fool someone. Yeah. <laughs> Food me. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh boy. Oh boy. That's a huge one. This is a big nickel harpa. Um, this is an octave nickel harpa. So it's like this three row here, but only bigger and tuned an octave lower. So it's basically tuned like a cello. Mm. So we're gonna hear. 
uh, a new tune from your yeah your head uh, uh, but maybe from your <laughs> yeah um, in in that direction if you all look there there's uh, <laughs> it's my workshop where I uh, I'm building two nickel harpas at the moment and I had taken apart it was this one I took apart to study some keys and uh, and I was uh, building and shaping the bent keys on um, on the first row on this one and uh, when I put it put them all back together again I wanted to try the nickel harpa if it worked mm -hmm. and this tune came out sitting there in the wood workshop came in one piece mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so it's called verkstad that's what it's called in Swedish that little that's room that's the room where you make things <laughs> Thank you. 
Yes. I miss the applause. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've seen so many live stream concerts when the musicians, we, we just look at each other and, and laugh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe, the, maybe one day we will get <laughs> applause again. Yes. <laughs> um, so, uh, the 17th of, of March, there's a special day for all Irish people, isn't it? Yes. St. <laughs> Patrick's Day. Yeah. And uh, we are going to play for that. Yeah, event. And, and when this is broadcasted, we have already played. Yeah, <laughs> yes, it's strange. <laughs> but um, I made a tune, especially for this uh, occasion. Yeah. And it's called the Den Gröna Ön. And that will translate not to the Green Island, but to <laughs> the, the Emerald Island. Island. Emerald Island. Um, I don't know if it's in any kind of Irish style, but... <laughs> you will judge, I guess. <laughs> Have, uh, have had a lot of fun on Ireland. Yes, um, together with uh, uh, Martin Hayes and Dennis Cahill and Dervish. Dervish. We, we have been touring together, both 
here in Sweden and on Ireland. So we're looking forward to go back and visit the Emerald Island mm. with this tube <laughs> in the luggage. <laughs> um, now we're going to play a traditional polska again. Yes. Um, um, yeah, and it's after a fiddler that, um, well, his life destiny was not so easy. No, it was say. not like a straight line at all. Um, <laughs> because he committed a crime, a terrible crime. Yes. Mm. He stabbed a, a butcher? I guess. A uh, butcher uh, to <laughs> death with what? A, a small penknife. Yeah. Um. So um, and uh, and they were out uh, after work drinking. It, yes, after work party. <laughs> so <laughs> went terribly wrong. Yes. Yeah. So they were on several uh, bars in Uppsala. Uh, we're just outside Uppsala now, um, but they were in there and they had drinks on several places and they they started to argue. And uh, finally, the, this butcher guy started to whip uh, Lanson, as his name was, with a yeah. with a horse whip. And to defend himself, he he took his penknife, and um, I guess he didn't mean to kill him, but that's what happened anyway. Yeah. So he was sitting was captured in prison for ten years. Yes. Yeah. In, in Stockholm at Longholmen. Mm. But then he got out uh, and he he changed his life. He got uh, he got married, he got a wife and he got children and he became best friends with the archbishop in Uppsala who uh, not fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And hired him as a musician many times and, and he had a uh, he had a very special old style of playing that many felt was uh, vanishing, that uh, mm. way of playing. So he was uh, lifted up and uh, celebrated in many ways yeah. when he became Also old. documented in the collection Svenska Låtar, the yeah. Jewish, so, so he's, he has a chapter there by yeah. himself. So interesting destiny, life yeah. destiny. So let's try to, we will try to, to kind of, uh, uh, what you say, <laughs> illustrate that. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no. uh, but it's a Vis Polska, which is a Polska tune with mm. lyrics to it. Uh, and then it's like an instrumental version of that mm. little song as well.
the dark side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But came came back again. Yeah. 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 Um, this has been wonderful uh, to share our music together with you, everybody who is listening. Thank you for checking this concert out. Uh, it's been uh, great to do this yes. from home. Um, yes, from your home. Yeah, from my <laughs> home. <laughs> you had to travel. I, I don't live here. No, uh, but I'm here quite a lot. Yeah. And um, it's not uh, on every concert you have your your array of nickel harpas just hanging next to you on the wall. That's very practical. You just mm. have to tune them. Yeah. And that's dead easy. So, <laughs> so we have to tour with this cottage then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe that is in the future an idea <laughs> of touring. So. We will finish off with um, Eric Sass drum tune. Yeah. Um, one of his famous ones. Yes. And I remember that we recorded this in 1985. Okay. <laughs> Isn't it? Yeah, I think it was yeah. in 1985. We recorded on. on um, um, it was a cassette yeah. uh, edition of this called The Ristri Örat. Yeah. And uh, I remember also uh, that we played it not so many years on a duo in Boston. And, I, uh, and then it was recorded and I kind of wanted to check if our versions were different from 1985. So I kind of um, put them together, the, the first half of the first recording in 1985 and then the, the new one. And it was no difference. Exactly the same <laughs> tempo. <laughs> tempo. <laughs> <laughs> but we haven't played it in no. between all those so years. It, it was like a time capsule. I yes. Think. <laughs> so it was in here. <laughs> and it was really interesting. I felt young playing it. <laughs> <laughs> This one is uh, called Hardrevet. It means the hunt for the hare. And Erik Sahlström, he was sitting by the kitchen table at his um, house in Jöksby, in northern Uppland, uh, same province as here. And uh, he could hear he was shooting in the village, gun gunshots. So he knew it was a hunt going on. And he was looking out the window and Suddenly, a dog came slowly running by with his tongue hanging out like a red tie. He was almost stepping on it. He oh. looked really tired. <laughs> <laughs> and then right after the dog was the hare jumping. So the hare had fooled the dog, jumped to the side and, and tricked him. Mm -hmm. And Eric thought that looked hilarious. And he composed this tune called Ha Drevet. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you.
<laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. So, Olaf Johansson and Mikael Marin, it is a great pleasure to be talking to you. And I'm sure there are many people out there who are very interested, not just in your music, but also what you have to say about your music making and other things. So I thought we'd start at the beginning, which is how did you meet and start playing together? <laughs> you, you start, Mikael. <laughs> well, um... We met at um, a fiddler's meeting. Um, and that's, yeah, Spelman's demo. Uh, and that was back in the early 80s. Um, and uh, I was playing with some friends tunes that I loved to play after the mainly Boleyn family and Talrud family tunes and 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 there was this tall guy very young <laughs> also playing this tune and after a while it was only he he and me left and and um, we realized that we we actually played the same tunes but we we didn't know how that was possible <laughs> really uh, uh, and it turned out that Olaf had uh, um, learned the tunes from Kurt Talrut, and I learned the tunes from Ivar Talrut, the older brother. Okay. So it was the same tradition. And um, after that moment, we, yeah, we, we have played a lot of notes together. And <laughs> have you counted how many? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's scary. <laughs> I have to ask as a mathematician, right? <laughs> yeah. Now, we also noticed we had a similar style of, of, of rhythm and phrasing and ornamentation in the music. So it was, it was very easy to, to connect. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was such an experience. So uh, after that, we, we look, looked each other up and started to play together. And um, uh -huh. and you were living in different cities at this point? Or were, were you close together geographically? I lived in Uppsala. Uh -huh. And uh, Mikael, you lived in Stockholm. Yes. Uh, time. So it was easy to take the pendle tog. <laughs> how how two. did we travel back then? I don't remember. I had a car. Yeah. My first, my first car. I was 18 years old, so I had a car, and we often met at uh, Mikael's parents' house during um, breaks, uh, like on during Easter or Christmas. We were sitting playing all the time. Hmm. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, that was a fortuitous meeting then. Uh, the world is glad that you <laughs> came to that. <laughs> that is great. So, uh, Olaf, can you describe the different types of nickel harp uh, you play? And maybe for those people who are not so familiar with the instrument, you could start off with just the basics of what makes a nickel harp a nickel harp and then what makes the variants that you play. Yeah, maybe maybe I should get one. Ah, oh, that would be perfect. It, show and tell is always appreciated. Yes, bear with me. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes. Okay. Uh -huh. Oh, here it comes. So, this is. Uh, a nickel harpa, uh, and this one is called a silver boss harpa, an old style of nickel harpa, uh, and this was the most common type during the 1800s. Mm -hmm. And what all nickel harpas have is uh, nicklar, which translates to keys in in English, and it's these, and you press them gently, and there's a a, a little 
peg of wood sticking up uh, like a, and that peg is fretting the string from the sides, making the string sh shorter. Yes, in English, we call them tangents. You may, you may do that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your permission. I'm glad that I have permission. Yeah. Okay. Um, call them that. <laughs> and uh, in Swedish, they're called löv, mm -hmm. leaves. Right. Uh, so all nickel harpas have these keys with tangents on them, making the strings shorter. And then what? What makes the different models different is, is how the playing me mechanism is set up and how, uh, how it's tuned and how many melody strings and drone strings and so on. Uh, but this is, the, I'm playing a lot on this one. Uh, at the moment, we have fun creating new music on this old nickel harpa. <laughs> and uh, this one is about 100 years old or something built by Fritz Wiedlund. Aha. <laughs> Wonderful. And but I, I'm, I'm also playing three-road chromatic, the modern nickel harpa and an octave nickel harpa, which is tuned like a cello, basically, sounding like a cello. And I also have a contrabass harpa, uh, which is the nickel harpa of the 18th century, you could say. So... And that's a, a pure drone instrument. It's just melody and drone on that one. Mm -hmm. And the, the name Silver Bass comes from what? This string. It's tuned in C. And uh, when they invented this type of nickel harpa, this string was made of, uh, it was a silk string with uh, silver wounded around it. Sounds like this. Very impressive. <laughs> <laughs> Especially plucked. <laughs> yeah. Great, great. Um, anything else you'd like to say about Nikhil Harpur? It's, a, it's an old traditional instrument in Sweden. Uh, we can trace it back uh, with kind of living tradition, knowing what was played and how they sounded back to maybe the 16, 1600s, late 1600s. And then there's also older history in that, that that's just pictures and uh, it's mentioned in court protocols. People have been killed with a nickel harpa and then it's noted <laughs> in, in legal court protocols. Oh, I didn't, that I did not realize. Um, <laughs> so so nickel harp uh, can be uh, dangerous. <laughs> Used in the wrong way, yeah. it's, a, it's a lethal weapon. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> we will, uh, I will take that in mind next time I have my nickel harp uh, and uh, take it to yeah. a place which has bad reputation. That <laughs> maybe that's not a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, Mikael, so you're playing viola. Uh, do you want, okay, are there special things about, do you play more than one different type of viola? Oh, I have a selection now. Oh, wow. What did it tell us about your different really instruments? Uh -huh. okay. um, oh. is, is it my imagination or is that bigger than normal? It's bigger. It's it's not actually a viola. It's I in in the the Vesen duo now. I don't really play the ordinary viola. Huh. I, no, not. So this is one of the instruments I use, and this is a violoncello da spalla, which huh. is a historical instrument. And um, mm, the Baroque period. When did yeah, it... and I this is perfect for me because I. I'm a big guy. Exactly. <laughs> I, I, I'm sure you probably know this, but you have been called the giants of Swedish folk music because oh. <laughs> of various reasons. <laughs> um, I kind of like that. <laughs> I, 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 for those people can't, who can't tell because of the Zoom, uh, you're both over six feet, right? No. Six feet? 
I, I can. This is an ordinary viola. Uh, uh, okay, so compare the size. Then you can see the the difference of the. Exactly. You've also got five strings on that. So what what, what is the tuning of the viola? Tuning is cello, cello C and E on top. Maybe, maybe, Mikael, you have a normal person that you can show as well, just to compare with your size. Well, you are sitting in my apartment. You're not normal. <laughs> <laughs> we can. But uh, uh, I have, um, it was a student of mine that when I got this instrument, it's not that it's built 2018. And, and uh, the student said, if you... Uh, if you look at it as a cello, mm -hmm. it's, it's really cute. But if you look at it as a, as a viola, it's a monster. <laughs> <laughs> but I love this, the sound of it, and, and also in the duo format to play with, although especially the octave, Nickel Harpa, the big one, it's, it's, um, it's, a, it's amazing sound. It, it, yeah. It, fresh in a way that yeah really like it and then i have also a blue electric viola tuned like a cello that i can use as a bass in this the duo that's a duo format which and is something new exactly exactly and and so is it like one of those carved out things which has just got the skeleton or is it a full I, I I get it. So that oh, makes wonderful. Just yeah. just moments. It, it's it does it does have a small sound box, uh, so it it does sound a little uh, acoustically as well. Right. Exactly. Huh. Okay. So yeah, it is it is much smaller. Right. Yep. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Now, now that looks like something you could spear somebody with if <laughs> tried yeah. hard enough. So it actually has some sound without the electrics. But it, um, this one, I, I'm, I'm, I'm almost all the time plucking. So, so it's it's more like a, a bass kind of. I don't know. I, the function of it is more of a base. Right, right, right. Yeah. And then I use this one as no, I don't <laughs> <laughs> go on the wall behind you. <laughs> you started uh, playing banjo. Um, that's that's a, a progress uh, working in progress. That uh, one. Okay. Oh, the I have to hear it on your next album. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. But uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Well, speaking of your next album, the, um, I wanted to wrap up by asking what projects you have for the future, when we may see you next on this side of the puddle, um, all of those good things. So, Well, uh, we are going to start to record uh, this week, tomorrow. <laughs> Uh, we start. We started to rehearse here today, uh, here at Mikkel's apartment in Stockholm, and tomorrow recording starts at my house just outside Uppsala. Um, and we have we have been cooking together some new music, um, new composed music on Silverboss Harpa, um, and. The, the octave nickel harpa, and then Mikael is using his instruments. Um, and it's been really fun, really uh, great feeling to, to explore this, these new instruments with new sounds. And um, it's been a pure joy <laughs> just Wonderful. making yeah. this stuff up. And then we have also been looking backwards towards uh, the, the, the fiddlers, the musicians who inspired us, the, for, for, 
that, that we first met, like Kurt and Ivar Tallroth and Erik Salström, Vikstalas and so on. So, so we'll, we'll both look forward and we'll look backwards uh, in, on this new album. Sounds like a great combination. <laughs> Mikael, do you have stuff to add to that? Or? Yeah, um, I can add something about looking forward and backward. It, it, uh, it, um, I think when you look backward, the, 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 the new stuff makes sense in a way. If you show what it, it's, it has, the origin, and the other way too. The new stuff make the old one. Uh, come alive and make sense. So, I think that's a that's, a, that's a, one experience that we kind of explore here, and and I'm feeling very comfortable in <laughs> because of our uh, roots in tradition and, and also as a composers. Exactly, exactly. So, so you're bringing the two worlds together. Exactly. Well, it has been just a great fun to have you here and uh, answer some questions and uh, talk about your music, um, Talks Kani Hall. And <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. And I look forward to seeing you face to face one of these days. <laughs> It'll be yeah. And uh, we're really looking forward to kind of meet you virtually now with this new music of ours. And uh, we're also looking forward to cross the Atlantic again um, in the future. We don't know when. We, we have to wait until we see it's, uh, everything is functioning with with organizers, we are, with the audience coming to live show. Uh, so it's even harder now to get visas. They've raised the fees even higher. So before we dare to, to um, exactly go for that, we need to know that everything is, is working. Right, that you will get enough people in the audience to uh, make the trip financially yeah. feasible. Yeah. But we'd love to come back uh, to America and meet all our uh, all all our audience all over the country. There, you have lots of fans here. <laughs> I'll know that for a fact. Well, it's been a great pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hey, hey. Bye, bye. bye.